Hey, guys, I see some of you guys crying in chat, and that's totally fine. All I'm asking for, I know it might be hard, but in the top right of your browser, or maybe top left if you're on Mac, there's a red X button. Click it if you can't handle a discussion or a conversation that isn't just screaming at my microphone blindlessly. Because we actually do have serious conversations and discussion. I, I voice a lot of my opinions regarding balancing, game design, and overall game philosophy. And especially enough for esports and competitive communities and overall building and enabling the growth of the game. Are you gonna play in Poland? Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. No. The setup's really bad. 80 teams, 240 players. Only 20 of the teams get paid. $500,000, 20 players for traveling internationally, which is already expensive. EA does not pay for travels. If you want to go there and you get invited to play, it's basically an invite-only LAN qualifier that you have to pay for on your own entirely. Housing, hotel, and everything you have to pay for. I would lose streaming. I would lose YouTube hours. I would lose days of streaming, probably a week. Not worth it. Like, even if I win, the amount of subs I would lose and shit would make it not really worth even getting first place for me. Because losing subs and, like, my community and stuff... Dude, I... My community wants me there? I know. That's why it sucks, because I want to be there, my community wants me there, but it's not worth it. That's unfortunately not how Twitch works. You lose subs anyway, you lose viewers. Blah, blah, blah. It's just, just normal. It happens. There's no way to avoid it. Taking time off as a streamer is really bad. And I already took two weeks off for moving across the country. And I wouldn't take another week off so close to this. Not worth it, unfortunately. Think of it as an advertisement? Yeah, I can think of it as an advertisement. But then the only comparison is that it's a bad advertisement that's not worth doing. And it would take time out of my life. And I would lose money on it. And it wouldn't help me grow as a streamer, unfortunately. Only way could you win? Even if I win, not really. So it's 100,000 to the winner. Split three ways after orgs would take a cut. Unless I would even be playing for an org, but then my teammates would be playing for an org. Or losing a ton of subscribers, losing YouTube videos, losing content. If you get first place, it might be worth it. But then only 20 teams get paid. And how many go there? 80. 240 players. And you have to be in the top 20 teams out of those teams, right? To even get paid at all. So you have to go through all of it. You have to go through all of the, the qualifiers to get to the 20, to even be in the money. And then beat the best teams in the world. Hello? To lose streaming for international yeah. travel. Lose view YouTube. Lose oh, subs. Not being able to stream anything for you. The money doesn't make sense, the time doesn't make sense, how much I care about my community and then taking that time off just to do that doesn't make sense. It sucks. It's yeah, leaving America though. and re-entering is just like, I can do it. It's not a problem, but it's just really a hassle and takes a long time. It's just because I have like Swedish letters in my name, I have to go through secondary and get like, uh, just Bro, not so being in America basically. Like, <laughs> it's possible, but it just doesn't make sense. Like, think about it like this. I might make more money if I go there and win, or maybe get second place, maybe, just for the, the week I would have to invest in time, maybe. But then I would lose more money over time by losing subscribers and not streaming, you know, blah, blah, blah. It sucks that they don't have it in America or in, I don't know. And then especially sucks really bad that they don't cover any travel for teams. They expect 80 teams, and out of all those 80 teams, maybe... Maybe 25 of them are sponsored. They expect the rest to pay for all their travel and accommodations on their own to play in a tournament that they might not earn anything from. If they had a tournament anywhere and they pay for the travel and accommodation, that's way different. But I'm really sad because we probably won't see Asian representation or even as much American representation for a tournament like that unless EA or ESL or whatever covers the cost. But it's a preseason tournament. Hopefully, hopefully the real season tournaments are just way better than this because I think this is a huge letdown. I feel like if they want 80 teams to play qualifiers for a tournament, they should have had online qualifiers. They should have had online qualifiers. Or at least partial online qualifiers and cover the rest of the travel accommodation for the rest of the teams after the partial online qualifiers. And then you find someone to pay for your trip? Well, the, the cost of the trip itself is not bad for me, but bad for a lot of other players. I can afford it. It's the time it would take to travel for this, how small the price pool is. And, like, it's not worth it because I would lose subs, I would lose, you know, I would 
risk you guys not coming back. There's a lot with streaming. You can't really take days off. It's not about that. But I think it's bad that they don't pay travel and accommodation because I'm a streamer, so I can afford the travel, but I can't afford the time it would take. But also, see, I like I want this game to be very international, and international tournaments are not about location, but rather about international representation within the community. So if it's hosted, if it's hosted in a, like a separate country, it doesn't matter as much as the amount of like diversity from the players. If that makes sense. And we will see zero, zero. Asian representation in the tournament if it's hosted in Poland. But it's only preseason. No, I'm joining a team as a pro player. Uh, with an organization that understands that pro play and tournaments that are hosted or supported improperly are not necessarily worth participating in. For sponsors or for streamers or whatever. A lot of reasons. Yeah. Why would so many teams go if it's such a bad idea? Because they're all gonna try to like reach to make it. They all wanna get signed, you know? They wanna grow their streams. And they're gonna bet out the money to try to like pursue that stuff, right? I'm saying that I don't think they should have to pay for it. If they have to travel to Poland for the tournament, I, I would rather have online qualifiers. I don't think you can disagree with that. Instead of having 60 players fly out and not get a single penny and lose money on participating, you could rather hold them online, right? Why would you pay on a, be on a team that doesn't pay for your travel and tourneys? Teams don't pay for that. Organizations do, my, my dude. I get what you mean, but 500k across 240 places and a lot of money. I know exactly. That's the whole point, right? They're not. They're only paying the top 20. So that means that a lot of players are not getting paid a fucking dollar and they're going to have to pay for their own travel. And instead, either having regional qualifiers or online qualifiers is, in my opinion, just way better. The thing I'm worried about, right, is that this game is always going to be directly compared to H1 and Fortnite. And they're making the same mistakes in terms of esports as both of them, as both Apex and Fortnite. Or uh, H1, sorry. That's why it's scary to me. I think regional qualifiers, if they want them to be local, or online qualifiers, partial online qualifiers, providing, you know, travel, if they want to hold the land, stuff like that. I think those are like things they should really push to be hard. I don't think we'll see many... I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I think there's going to be a lot of European teams. This is not Fortnite. This isn't the World Cup. Do you guys see the viewership for other tournaments in this game? The only viewership that has been good for the, like... The only tournaments and the, the leagues that have had good viewership in this game has been when streamers have been streaming the game. Not necessarily pro players participating. It's been Dizzy and Ace and me and King Richard. That's the viewership. When the game grows and if the game becomes to a similar size or a bigger size of Fortnite or other games, that's when these things matter more. Shroud, yes. Vis, Ninja, absolutely. This is not Fortnite World Cup. Whoever wins the, the, this tournament is not going to be crowned like in mainstream media, it's not gonna be in interviews on the fucking Tonight Show and shit, you know? That's the only way to get the game to grow, they need to do something. Absolutely, I totally understand you. That's exactly, as I can say it again, so maybe you'll understand it, but that's why they cannot make the same mistakes as its comparative titles. So there are games like, this game is compared to Fortnite, this game will be compared to H1, this game will, this game will be compared to other BR games, because BR is a genre, right? That's how they compare them. So, unfortunately, you, you can't just do whatever you want when other titles that you compare the game to do things either better. And then if those other titles make mistakes, you can't do the same mistakes. And that's what's been happening, you know? That's the thing. If they want to grow the game, which they had a massive launch season one, and then they fucked up really big for season one and lost a huge part of their viewership, a huge part of their player base, right? So if they want to grow the game, they can't do what hasn't been working, right? At the end of the day, they'll get 80 teams there and it'll be good for exposure and it will give them some EXP to improve things for the actual season. That's the thing, right? It's preseason, so this one doesn't matter that much. We'll see X Games viewership. Hopefully it's good, but if it's not very good, that would suck. Because then the preseason one is probably not going to be good either. If you think of marketing, you think of all these things, right? I will give you two scenarios and I will give you two realistic scenarios. There's a game that exists in the world that when they held tournaments they held tournaments in client in a way that was easy for the average player to understand and watch they held qualifiers in client tournaments you know stuff like that so you can play the game in the game you can watch people play the game in the game and then there are tournaments for another game 
where the only way to qualify is by screenshotting your kills and then sending those screenshots in. No, you can, you can, you don't have to like stream it. There doesn't need to be any proof. There's no in client support, no API support. They rely on qualifiers via in client screenshots for one of their biggest in nation tournament yet. Fortnite does the great thing where they can advertise the tournament aspects of the game and the competitive aspects of the game via in client systems like Fortnite did for the World Cup. And then celebrating it in a way and promoting it in a way that's easy to understand and play with a pretty simple format for a game that's really big, right? But instead, you know, they had online qualifiers for viewership where their biggest streamers and biggest pro players and biggest names can all participate in the qualifiers from home and if they have another job because I'm not paid by Apex. Apex doesn't play me, you know? It's not like they give me money to play their game. They have for a couple of hours at a time, but I'm not getting paid to advertise their game by them, right? This is my living. I make my living doing YouTube, doing Twitch. You know, I've been doing that for a long time. Oh, shit. And the way they had their qualifiers for the World Cup means that all the players that participated, they could do it from home. You know, they didn't have to travel. There were no visas, nothing like that needed for specific qualifiers. But now, in order to get, in, like, you know, you're, you're going to foreign country for the qualifiers and you have to pay for your own travel to get there and it's invite only. They're not just inviting anyone who comes to participate. If you get invited, you get access to the qualifier. And, you know, it's different if you compare this game to League of Legends or Counter-Strike, where the risk in playing tournaments is way different, but this game is a BR game. There's randomness, you know, there's variables, there's... It's a battle rail game. There's a lot of players that need to go, right? And then forcing people to play the, the qualifiers for the game offline is nowhere near as safe and good as doing it offline. I don't think there's any way to agree with that. So have I, what I say for this tournament is the biggest improvement they could have made is to somehow tie this tournament's qualifiers into the mainstream, point. like into the yeah. average popularity of the game, which is like, oh, you know, use the rank system and, and, and people who are above X amount of RP at the end of the season get access to online qualifiers or something or just hold custom game qualifiers and stuff like that there's a lot of stuff they could have done to make sure that you know it's not as big of a risk because teams that go for two tournaments that are considered risks they're usually salaried players but a lot of people who go to this tournament will not be salaried players at all they will be paying out of their own pocket to participate instead of just having regional qualifiers where it's in spread out across the world so the people who play the qualifiers can do it closer to where they live or online, right? Just online. So obviously doing online is better because and more respectful and I also think more competitive. And for me, that part isn't a problem for me. Like I could afford my own flights. Uh, I would probably find a sponsor that would, even if not an organization, I could easily find a sponsor just like, hey, wear our t-shirt there and we'll pay for your flight, shit like that, you know, because I'm a streamer, you know, I'm a community name. I think a lot of players are gonna be able to do that, but I also think a lot of players aren't going to be able to do that. It's not meant to be fair when the main projective is to promote the game. Exactly. And what is the biggest complaint about Fortnite esports? The most dominant BR esports in the world is that they only use their competitive scene to promote their own game. Imagine if Apex, another BR that popped off, handled rank and stuff to build their viewership and player base. It's not meant to be fair that they have to promote the game. And if it sucks feeling like, oh yeah, this tournament is happening as a promotional team. activity. But imagine if they come out and like they advertise how seriously they take this, you know, they're really serious about treating their players right different on the left here I'm getting hard carried you guys are distracting me chat see your fucking dumbass comments this time we just bring up my GTFO clip and play that on repeat to make sure that we fucking get the some of the dumbasses out of here bros so there's no qualifier no either you get invited and or you don't and if you get invited you have to pay your travel and your teammates have to pay their travel and then if you're in the bottom, there's 80 teams. Only 20 of them get any money whatsoever. And the lowest paid players probably won't even pay for their hotels and travel to get to the actual event. That's why it's rough. See, for me, it's different because I have my job outside of this streaming, right? I have to consider that. I have to consider the circumstances and how it affects my community, my fan base, my subscriptions, my growth, 
you know, it's, it's different for me as a pro player that's a streamer and traveling internationally and stuff. But they don't they're not having any qualifiers. It's invite only. And you basically qualify at the event, but you have to com completely commit and pay for it because no travel and accommodation is provided. Now, compare that to the, the alternative online qualifiers. You get access to the online qualifiers via having a pre-registered team. So imagine if like you can register with an Apex team, like in game, you can get like, you know, like a WoW 3v3 team back in the day, like a guild or a clan. And then you can have max, let's say maybe just let's say four players you have a team and then a substitute player on a, on a lifeline, and then in order to get access to the qualifiers that are going to be held for the main tournament your team needed to have at least a certain amount of rp in total or maybe it takes your top three players and those top three players or your whatever you know might get access that way they advertise their rank system, they advertise competitive play, they make the rank system more available to the public than invite only, and outside of, you know, um, organization-based relationships or player-based relationship with competitive managers and stuff like that. That means they advertise the rank system, they advertise the average game mode, they make it easier to watch and understand because you would see a bunch of streamers start gaming over a month with set streams, you see a bunch of pro players playing the same queues. It would be overall more enjoyable and I think better for overall growth for the game. But invite only, uh, not a fan. Invite only with no travel and accommodation, even worse. Because people are going to try to beg for an inv invite and then use that invite to maybe find someone willing to pay for the travel. And like, a lot of people maybe can't afford it, you know?